today we are going to dis discuss diapers and soldomes so what are diapers what are soldom and the different derivation related to it all these questions it is given by the presentation is presented by Vishwajit Kumar right, right, right. of NIT Raipur NIT Raipur NIT RR ok so let's get started so what is a diaper? A diaper is a type of geological intrusion. It is a type of geological intrusion in which a more mobile and ductile deformable material is forced into a into a brittle overlying rock. So it is a geological intrusion. One bed is here, it is intrude and the intrusion is mobile means it can move and ductile means it can it doesn't break okay it doesn't break so diapers are geological intrusion uh, which are mobile and ductile deformable material which is forced into brittle overlying rocks overlying means above underlying overlying So, brittle fracture can reduce the uh, strength of the roof and allow salt to ascend and fall diapers. So, what are the conditions? Brittle fractures. Fractures. If the rocks present fractures, then diapers are what? Salt. Okay. Then, allow salt to ascend and form diapers. The salt will now can come above form diapers. Okay. So these are diaper. Now, diapers stop rising when the roof become too thick. When the roof will become very thick, which is unbreadable for the salt, then it will stop. <laughs> Although igneous formation can be called as diapers, igneous formation can also be called as diapers. The term is usually gener uh, described for non genus non igneous relatively cold material like soldomes and mud diaper since uh, igneous okay igneous bulb can also be called as diaper but the term is generally used for salt domes and mud diapers the, in the salt domes the overlying layer is invaded by salt coming above from the fractures if present in the rock overlying rock lithology okay so diapers are commonly wait not very much diapers are commonly intrude violently upward along fractures or zones of structural weakness through denser overlying rock they commonly intrude the fractures or zones of structural weakness through denser overlying rock so these are yes mobile and ductile deformation so the rocks if contain fractures then it will invade the salt will invade and this process is known as diaperism the process of invading the fractures and joints or the structural disconformities discontinuities present in the rock which are invaded which are invaded by salt this process is known as diaperism the resulting structure is also known as pyrosmen structure and the resulting structure the landform is known as Pyrsman, Pyrsman, Fadi Bise, Tahu. Okay. Uh, the rock types such as evaporitic salt deposits, gas charged mud, and potentials are the potential source of diapers. So, what are the source of diapers? Salt deposits and muds. Salt deposits and muds are the main major source for diaperism to occur in a place diapers also form in earth mantle mantle when sufficient mass of hot less dense magma is assembled diaperism is the mantle it's thought to be associated with the development of large igneous province and some mantle plumps so uh, diaperism can also occur in igneous activity so this is the example here given 
Depression is the is in the mental thought to be associated with development of large igneous province. Large igneous province. This is magma coming and some mental plants, small size. Okay. Since it is also associated with igneous but commonly not described. Evaporatic salts and salt and mud deposits. Okay. The next is there are three modes of diaspirism. Diaspirism are of three modes act reactive, active, and passive. So, this is a reactive modes, means progression from one to three. So, first is reactive, then it's active, then passive. First is reactive type some then more than the most okay so what is reactive modes a salt layer buried by overlying strata of a constant thickness and greater density will not form a diaper until external forces apply a salt layer buried under a constant thickness and a greater density okay will not form enter until external force is applied yes it will stay in its original position okay until a force is applied it will invade it will invade it will invade okay diaper initiate during extension and contraction when diaper of oh, initiate extension and contraction the most initiated during regional extension when region is extended region is extended so this is the region it is going to extend it's extend so what will happen it will fault it will crack it will crack so in this crack the salt can now come above okay come above flow for me, dive prism. Mm. Extension of contraction. Or it should be or okay. Or extension can also be yes, extension, folding. Folding, folding. These are the these are the weak points. Okay. Next. Extension, how extension of the overburden is lengthened. See, the overburden is lengthened and thin and allows soul to fill the space and grow. So, it's the very easy example. If the it's extended, what will happen? The rocks will now be thinned. Here, the rocks will be thinned, forming cracks, and the salt can now come up. The contraction, what is the con shortening? Folding, it's, it's covered. It's shortened means here it is forming cracks in the hinge area so hinge area is forming cracks salt rooms ok now it is the reactive type now what is active type when the overburden is thin and weak the differential pressure is great enough to for salt to break through the surface ok the when the overburden is thin thin and weak the differential pressure will now salt placing of a brittle overburden occurs when the salt pressure exceeds the overburden stress now for the first in the first condition the wall was thick so the salt can now cannot invade it but if the wall is thin it can invade can we since there is a pressure there is a pressure there is a pressure yeah. then this is known as active this is active dice prism now the third is it's a classic model for fluid error both 
fault and surrounding sediments behave like vicious fluid in fluid era so there is an era which is fluid era where fluid era means yes yes when the this is where lava the uh, the whole earth we know the is uh, ice age like ice age there is a fluid age also where the whole the earth the igneous rocks are not formed that time the whole whole, whole magma lava non evaporate sediments increase density and compaction and water loss in that salt buried below a kilometer so it both salt and surrounding sediments are vicious since all the things are in vicious not sub liquid non evaporate sediments increases density with compaction and water loss at that non evaporate which cannot evaporate sediments increases density okay increase the density and compaction with compaction and water loss at depth salt buried below a kilometer has more positive buoyancy okay the buoyancy of the salt which is here and equal the 1 kilometer below will be much more salt moves as a series of independent spines series series not single series okay. salt pressing a brittle overburden occurs when the salt pressure exceeds the overburden strength known as threshold okay. salt pressing salt will press the overburden layer when when the salt pressure in exceed the overburden strength and this is known as salt pressing threshold okay when when the pressure will increase when the stress will exceed the overburden okay. now the third is the passive dice pressing so once as once the salt breaks through the surface it will continue to grow as the surrounding sediments continue to subside until salt source is depleted okay so So after the active, uh, yeah, first is reactive, then active. So once it invade, it will not not stop. It will go on increasing its size and increasing its elevation until it reaches the top. When it, it reaches the top, weathering agents will act here. And okay and and the source and when it will stop until the source is depleted finished source will be finished then it will get okay uh, grow as surrounding sediment continue to subside until the source source is depleted so most dominant style of diaper growth is yes you can see passive dice so is in most since is the most sedimentation rate salt flow and rate salt supply control diaper geometry so the diaper how the diaper is round why because the sedimentation rate salt flow rate salt supply diaper geometry how big it will be how height it can attain all are the Mm, uh, basically depends on the salt flow rate and salt supply and so this is the important say if salt rate is less than sedimentation rate narrow diaper salt rate is less than sedimentary rate Sed the sedimentary rate is high and salt rate well, it's small it is small and if salt rate exceeds is high 
then the sedimentation rate is higher and then it will grow <laughs> no. so once salt source is depleted the diaper stops growing and buried by sedimentation so once salt source is finished salt source is finished it will stop growing it will stop growing and it will get buried by sedimentation sedimentation buried again okay so passive passive type shape is determined by the diapism sedimentation not important dome is a type of structural dome so as the word depicts that is the dome it's formed when a salt or the other evaporized material not only salt include the overlying rock by the process of diaspism and come above salt domes have a unique surface and subsurface structure and then will be discovered by the technique seismic reflection how a dome how a dome is differentiated from a sole dome so see here the sole dome these the color are dark but this color is somehow uh, white than the surrounding so we, this is known as this process is known as seismic reflection from this we can identify that uh, yes this this can be a salt dome okay next is formation of salt dome how salt dome form the formation of salt dome begins with the deposition of salt in a restricted basin at first this is a basin salt will deposit okay in this basin the overflow of water exits inflow means this is the basin salt okay salt so what will happen because of salt is depositing all the water will come out all the water will come out most constantly uh, the basin loses water through evaporation resulting in the precipitation and deposition of salt because un until today all this water will gone and the basin will be full of salt only only salt 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 okay the rate of sedimentation of salt is significantly larger than the rate of sedimentation of plastics <coughs> the ra rate of sedimentation the deposition of salt will be much higher than the rate of plastic sediment physically broken so it will be full of salt only over time the layer of salt is discovered <coughs> is covered by deposited sediment uh, uh, some so as it will cover the basin with salt until uh, but next it will be deposited by sediments sediments okay <coughs> salt has higher buoyancy than silt slit above it now since salt has buoyancy it can float it can float and if the bottom surface of the salt is affected by strong faulting event the salt can flow upward forming salt pillows now salt since salt has less buoyancy high buoyancy sorry higher buoyancy then the overburden sedimentation so it wants to come up it wants to come here to here and when it will come if it will get cracks here cracks will get cracks then it will directly come 
when it will get cracks at reactive type okay reactive type or active type reactive if it get shortened or extension so the surely some faulting joints will occur and the do, um, salt will come out and if passive uh, active type if this is very thin then since it is higher buoyancy it will want to come up and so it will invade the overlying rock and come up ok so different types of salts what are the different salts used um, which are used in this so normal salt nacl is present these are the basic salt double potash these are all bleaching salt normal salt magnesium salt these are the different types of salt which are present in salt domes next is huh, why salt domes are economically important the cap rock can serve as an oil and natural gas reservoir since it is basin and it is deposited with so um, sediment it can serve as a cap rock up arch allow oil and gas to migrate see it's a basin salt this arc this arch allows natural gas and oils to migrate here and deposit here okay and where it can accumulate in a structural trap so this is a trap since this is a basin salt and if it's overburdened by sediments and this is a gap so what will happen natural gas and oil from different parts will get a reservoir like structure and will accumulate here so salt domes are important okay the economic benefits are further high highlighted by reduced drilling cost so due to their shallow nature since we know that if they are higher buoyancy so salt domes wants to come up so when they will come up they will carry these trap also so the drilling cost will be much less so they are economically very important okay the a single creating a perfect storm of opportunity mm -hmm. a single salt dome can have many associated reservoir at variety depths and location so it's a, a single mm -hmm. can serve around a dome it can serve a quadrillion amount of natural gas oils so they are economically very very important so these are the diagram this is a passive a passive it's coming up okay and this hmm, these are reservoirs these are reservoirs these are reservoirs they are natural gas then they do intrude and drill the oil so this is the reference so thank you this was all about the salt domes diapers its derivations and economic importance